So, Joel, have you been tuning into the MOOC at all? No. What's a MOOC? What's the home <laughs> place? <laughs> Why don't you handle that one, Rob? Um, well, let me put a link in here for you because that's probably the best way. But um, so MOOC stands for Massive Online Open Course. Have oh, you heard right. of those at all? Yeah, for sure. I've heard of them. I've never actually seen them as such. I'd be very interested to see what that means. Uh, the well, other thing, I'm sorry, I just wanted to interrupt, and Joel mentioned to you that we are streaming and we are recording. Okay. <laughs> what, what this so, is, this is I, I call this a MOOC cast, and so the Edu MOOC is a MOOC that started six weeks ago, and you know MOOCs are all about clustering and doing your own thing, and so one of the things I've been doing is this weekly webcast. Uh, mm -hmm. And so whoever shows up, shows up, and we have our conversations, and it gets gets published afterward. Okay. Um, this time I will refrain from my political opinions criticizing the people that pay my salary. Okay? Because <laughs> <laughs> the last time we did this uh, with, uh, with Jeff, uh, Rob, uh, I, I actually asked him if he would refrain from putting it up because I was giving my opinions on global education which is at odds with the people who pay me for the European Union project that I actually do. So. And I had uh, just popped into the Hangout uh, and automatically started recording just because that's what I do. Uh, <laughs> hadn't notified people, so. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, so you are familiar with MOOCs, Joel? Uh, I've heard of it, but I've never actually, but I'd love to know more. Okay, back to Rob. So that's, this one's all about online learning. So there are eight weeks, and I think we're in week six, personal online learning networks. And then there's two more weeks after this. Um, but uh, it's probably the, and so, I don't know, I think this one's pretty well organized. Um, different people ha with different learning styles have, you know, different opinions, but uh, I've enjoyed it. Um, you know, you could take it as much as you want out of it. Yeah. And um, so this one's organized by the, oh, who is it? University of Illinois, I think. That sounds right. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, you could do MOOCs, I think, the rest of the year because I think there's another one coming up right after, or in the midst of this one. Last weekend, there was an educational symposium free online conference that you could be part of. <laughs> well, uh, RSCOM. RFCOM. Yes, yeah, right. Company. Forum Symposium. That's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually spoke. I actually spoke at that. Oh. So were you, you part of that one a year me? ago, too? Uh, no, I didn't do it a year ago, but uh, Shelley got on my case, so I had to do it. <laughs> well, that sounds like a very familiar story. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I'm actually doing some work with Shelley, so... Um, so it, I, I'm, I'm, an easy, I'm an easy target for her. But I was happy to do it anyway. You know, it's, it's all what was your topic? Well, I spoke about these European Union education projects that I'm involved in. Hmm. And I spoke about the actual program, the, the program that uh, it, it, it is and how it works, and what its priorities are. And then I gave some examples of projects that I actually do as examples of the sort of work that we do within that program. Um, I don't know if you've heard of this, but uh, it's it's about the biggest uh, program of its type globally. So it's it's it, there's a lot going on there. Well, I'm not familiar with it at all, but Maria, are you? Um, I'm not. Uh, can you please uh, put the link in chat? Yeah. Um, what I'll actually do is uh, I'll put a link to the. Uh, to the website of the, it's run by the European Union government. It, it, it's actually a political agenda, of course, uh, <laughs> that is then uh, it, it, about education and integration. Well, integration within Europe is a different sort of thing to integration, let's say, in the United States or in other contexts, because in Europe it's a social and political integration, not a cultural or language integration because it's uh, the individual cultures of, uh, of Europe is what makes Europe so that's not to be integrated that's to be kept diverse and we just had our results published of our proposals for this year 
um, over the last couple of weeks and lots of well I've got five really nice new projects so. well it's good to be employed <laughs> absolutely <laughs> And the, the topic for this week in the EDUMOOC is actually PLNs, uh, which is very connected to, I believe, the project you're working on as far as mentoring people into the world of social media. That's right. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, yeah, we, we have a project. Uh, in fact, Shelley is a, a consultant to that project called A Planet. Uh, I can give you a couple of links to that while we're at it. And also, I want to encourage something. people to toss links into the chat room at I'm going to go ahead and put the chat room in our hangout chat um, <laughs> and I encourage people to do this one because the hangout chat is not automatically saved so sometimes we can lose the chat log and also because it I don't know not all the time but sometimes it dings so the less yeah. we ding the better ding there's another one for me ding no, you, you know what Mark Twain said about uh, America and England, don't you? We're, we're separated by a common language. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's how I'm feeling here. Bing, mook. <laughs> it's a whole new vocabulary. Yeah, we love to just so, make stuff up. So, so question. Uh, a planet, is it a meme? No, it, it's, it's actually a European project. And um, what I've just done quickly is given you a link to one of our uh, projects. Um, yeah, <coughs> one of our project uh, um, websites, which is a, a community, a NIN community. Uh, we also have a website and a Facebook page. And the website most well gives you more information about the project than the NIN does. Uh, well, uh, my question is, is this, uh, is this running on the NIN platform? Because that's what it looks like. I, I should have started actually with the website, which is the second link that I've given you. Uh, what it is, is the A Planet project is about personal learning networks for language educators. And what we have done is we have an information site, which is the A Planet Project EU. And then we use a Ning, A Planet Project Org. Uh, to use it as a community site because the idea of this project is eventually we're going to be mentoring uh, people who are familiar with uh, running their own personal learning networks and the social networks will be mentoring uh, language educators who are not familiar and who need some help to actually become familiar and how to use social networks as a tool of professional learning, uh, professional development. So, Maria, I'm curious, uh, we haven't connected before during the MOOC, uh, how is your MOOC going? What has uh, been your, your focus, your interests? Um, I am participating very peripherally, uh, basically because of where I am with my projects. I, am, I happen to have two full-time projects going on, <laughs> so uh, less time than I planned. Uh, but. Uh, Basically, um, I have um, focused on uh, helping to create uh, the article on Wikipedia about MOOCs. That was, I guess, my main thing that I was doing. So I started the article, tried to encourage people to comment, answered questions about Wikipedia, little quirks and uh, habits that they have. And, uh, well, uh, that's what that was my main thing. I was following uh, daily uh, emails on the group and following some links. I subscribed to the Facebook, uh, but I uh, was reading uh, the, uh, uh, Twitter and blogs very, very sporadically because of the time constraints. So kind of um, getting the aggregated part of it more than uh, the, the meat of it. Yeah, I think everyone kind of has to choose. They, they, you can't follow everything. Um, were you uh, tell me more about the Wikipedia page? And I'm putting the link in now, if I can find it. That's really a good thing you're doing with that, Maria. That's I, I knew I'd seen your name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
Yeah, uh, mm. well, I think uh, <coughs> people need uh, some sort of uh, collective actions to, to feel good. And I find the uh, editing Wikipedia excites people uh, because, oh, I edited the Wikipedia. Well, some people are editors there already, so that's less exciting. But most people aren't, actually. There are only a couple million editors there. Um, and only really a few thousand uh, active editors, believe it or not. So uh, on an, in an average group, most people have never edited a Wikipedia article. So I thought uh, that would be a good, uh, uh, a good task for a group. And it was. So several people got excited about it. And uh, I think it's something that needs to be there. I mean, uh, how come we don't have a MOOC article? And this so is the that's the reasoning. Hey, how, how could there not be a MOOC page? Were, was there like uh, just pages for specific MOOCs before or just MOOCs were no, not No, there was nothing. There huh. was nothing. You can, you can go and see the history of this page. So Yeah, I um, just did and it dates back a month. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, so until we started a month ago, uh, uh, if you see all, all the history, um, if you if if you see so on 10th of July, it's less than a month. So 10th of July uh, was the first uh, creation, and uh, then um, in about a week, someone said it doesn't have enough stuff, so added category sh that it should be removed. Then um, now I guess in two weeks, and so now we are editing it. Uh, now it's pretty long, so it, I guess it won't be removed by now because it's hmm. already a good article. Mm -hmm. But Wikipedia always puts those warnings that make you feel very uh, inferior. You know, this introduction to the hmm. article provides insufficient context for those unfamiliar with the subject. It's a lot of pressure. Well, mm. and I went and looked at who did the warning, and it was a very illuminating uh, personal page to see. It's very interesting to see who does what. So this person uh, has a whole uh, big rant, uh, I guess, about um, not everybody can be a Wikipedia editor. Very select few people can. And I am there to uphold the standards. And uh, mm. uh, most people should go away. We live here in Wikipedia. We breathe it. We, we, we eat it. We, we <laughs> so on. And um, this is important. Uh, if you can't, uh, if you haven't read uh, the detailed descriptions of the code, you should be editing. So some people have these opinions, which is fine. It's just how it is. That's why there are so many wiki projects. <laughs> mm. Yeah, um, I, I actually had a similar experience with uh, a Wikipedia article that I wanted to update. And obviously, I, I didn't even bother looking who it was, but somebody obviously considered it their article, and nothing was allowed to be added or taken away, and it was theirs, which is, of course, in my <coughs> opinion, completely not the whole concept of Wikipedia. You know, so, it's a shame, shame. But this, well, is, but this is very interesting. It, it is. Uh, Wikipedia is supposed to be convergent, so uh, and there are always wars because of it, uh, correction wars, because uh, mm -hmm. it has to be convergent, neutral, and uh, so on. So, I mean, that's why it's losing editors. Um, and uh, overall, uh, there are s many different wiki projects that have different principles. And I think, uh, mm. I don't think Wikipedia is uh, particularly um, appropriate for MOOC approach, actually, because MOOC is uh, divergent. Uh, mm -hmm. Or, I, I'm not pronouncing it right, am I? M O O C? Yeah, yes, that, no. that sounds good. Okay. Um, a, 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 anyway, but. Um, it's not the engine of the wiki that makes this happen. It's just social conventions. Yeah. Do you have so much experience uh, editing Wikipedia articles? Uh, not really. I don't like the principles much, so I only edited a few. Uh, I mean, I understand how it works. I've been following the project and some discussions of it. 
but I, I like to use different wikis, different projects with different principles uh, for, for my projects, basically. And mm. what are your projects? Have we heard that yet? I don't know. Um, I, uh, I do mathematics education mainly. So uh, actually, I'll have to leave uh, in a few minutes because I have a webinar coming up uh, on math future. So uh, here is uh, one of my uh, projects. Uh, we just had uh, uh, we had more than a hundred webinars in uh, the last two years. Wow. It's a pretty good community, I think. Uh, of uh, well. Uh, I like it because people get together and discuss things and uh, it's topic specific. So I'm in mathematics education. I need to find my people and that's what it is. Um, so what do you think of the Khan Academy videos? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, you just said you've done your own webinar, so you obviously have some comparisons and that sort of thing. And as a math educator, you know, there's been a lot of conversation this summer about con stuff and that sort of thing. So I'm just curious where you come from, or what what okay. what are the uh, pluses and minuses? I come from Bill Gates hurting con so badly. What <laughs> Bill Gates went and said? I mean, this is a way to hurt a person, right? He went and said, okay, everybody look, do it this way. Khan is the way to do it. This is the future of all mathematics education everywhere and everybody should be doing everything this way. Well, what Khan does actually, it's very limited. Uh, he produces videos explaining how to solve standard test problems. Now, is this all of mathematics education? Not at all. It doesn't explain how to learn the concepts required to solve the problems. It doesn't explain why the mechanisms work typically. And it's, I mean, there are a lot of things it doesn't do. It doesn't do problem solving, doesn't do discovery, doesn't do creation, which is fine. One single project cannot do all of those things. It serves very well a particular person, purpose. If someone, <laughs> if someone goes and forgets an algorithm, like my kid, you know, uh, forgot an algorithm. Uh, I am not Google and I'm not Khan. So I, uh, she comes to me and say, how do I do that? And I'm like, what, do, what am I, Google? Go, go look, <laughs> go look at Khan Academy. And uh, you, you will find how to do it exactly explained by a good person in a visual way, uh, solidly. So will I send you there to learn a new concept? I probably will not. Uh, so you just have to know the limitations. And that's what teachers are saying. So the controversy is from saying, OK, this is the whole of education. But it's not. Hmm. When you guys were talking earlier about um, the original author of a Wikipedia article being very um, possessive, it reminded me of one of the challenges of online learning, and that's of having teachers be comfortable having sharing content because most teachers believe that their content's the best. But hmm. I think that's one of the biggest challenges, and it. You know, just to bring this back a little bit to this week's theme, you know, having a professional learning network is about, you know, giving and taking. And to me, for people who can't give and take, it probably doesn't fit them too well. They should probably stay off the web then. <laughs> but, but it is interesting trying to get teachers to collaborate and agree on common content because it's, um, in my experience with online learning with high school teachers, it's been uh, pretty challenging to get them to agree with that. I'm uh, I'm very interested in this uh, because this is something new for me the uh, the MOOC idea and uh, maybe another time we can just sit down and possibly Jeff and uh, I don't know I, I give me sort of a run through because what I'm sort of lo looking at here is <clears throat> uh, you know whenever I see something new like this I always think now 
is there a European project in this? Uh, because that's very much uh, what I'm into. Uh, because we can take these ideas, these nascent ideas that perhaps we find all over the place, and uh, then take them and share them and make them part of uh, a European education, bring them to the attention of educators all across Europe. So that's a, this is something, you know, my, my first thing is, ooh, what's this? It, how does it work? How could I fit it into the, into the box of a European project? And lo looking, you know, Morning, um, Rebecca. coming from me. From yeah, I just wanted to say, woohoo, Rebecca's here. Hi, Rebecca. <clears throat> Uh-oh, no voice. Sorry, let's try this again. Hello. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And I also wanted to say hello to Chahira, who is in the chat room and listening into the webcast, who wanted to share a link. And for those of you in the Hangout who are not in the chat room, uh, this is the link she wanted to share, planetmath.org. Okay. Uh, and as far as learning more about a MOOC, I think you know, you've got the major creator of the Wikipedia page on MOOC in this Hangout, not to mention yeah. the star blogger of this edge of MOOC. Yeah, yeah I'm, I, I've read through. Uh, I've read through the, and you know, what, you see, uh, when when I see things like this, I, I sort of think, well, what are you actually teaching here? What's what is the course? I mean, obviously, uh, I, I look at the Wikipedia and I see something that is obviously, or, or, or to me, appears to be generic, whereas I. I'd be interested in it from, you know, how, what subject you are talking, or subjects, what does it mean when you have, uh, where is it now, I'm just talking about, distributed instructors, and distributed instructors, learners, yes, I get that, across a common topical field. So, for example, have you been using this with maths? And this is why, obviously, uh, Maria is involved in this. Just want to say quick hello to uh, first-timer Allison. Hello, Allison. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm really a first-timer. I don't know. I assume you can hear me. I we hear know. you. We yep. see you. Is uh, this your actual yeah. first hangout? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh. totally. It's taken Always me excited. over 27 minutes to figure the whole thing out. <laughs> had to add a plug. Glad you made it. And are you involved at all yeah. in the Edumook, or you just stumbled across the hangout? I'm, I'm a latecomer to the Edumook, yeah. So I saw your post to the uh, Google group. And uh, so that's how I got here. And where are yeah, you, and so, what do you do? Kind of um, stuff. I'm in New Jersey, USA. I uh, I'm a math educator, like Maria. <laughs> I know Maria from Wiki Educator, and uh, some of her other work, uh, Future of Education, and places like that. So yeah, so uh, I um, I teach statistics at uh, Rutgers Graduate School to educators, to um, you know, graduate students, and uh, statistics to homeschoolers. I work with homeschoolers generally. I work uh, with a learning center in Princeton that's trying to get off the ground, um, sort of alternative learning environments. Mm. So. so I'd like to go back to what Joel was talking about a minute ago and see if there's general agreement here. So when I've explained the MOOC to people, I, I talk about what I think is this continuum of learning. And at one end of the continuum, is one-to-one -one learning, right? Where you've got one teacher and one student. It seems to me that the MOOC is at the other end of the continuum, um, and probably beyond that would be personal learning networks. I don't know, um, but in my mind, I was reading something that talked about you know one-to-one -one learning being the most you know effective way for a kid to learn, and of course that makes a lot of sense because you can adjust for the for a kid, but. A MOOC seems to me at the other end of the continuum. I'm wondering if other people see the same thing. I, I, am I there? Yeah. Um, I definitely see the, um, the relationship between the personal learning networks and MOOCs because I've, I've certainly expanded my learning network quite dramatically as a result of participating in MOOCs. So I think that that's actually one of the I guess best reasons to do it is to is is to be able to connect to more people and actually um, expand your learning network. Um, I think you have to look at several different MOOCs to get a better sense of 
what things are because I think edgy MOOC is at one extreme end. Um, I almost think that that Epcot MOOC is at the other extreme end because I find that one very. Um, How would you characterize those extremes? Um, well, edgy MOOC is very open um, and has very little structure where Epcot MOOC is actually closed in a lot of ways. Like, you have to sign up, and and it's also very strongly facilitated. Like, I get regular emails if I don't post. <laughs> but no, it's almo it almost feels invasive. I'm actually looking at um, disengaging from that one for that, re that reason and the fact that I'm going to be away for three weeks. So I, I can't really participate in it, but it almost feels like you're not allowed to be a lurker in that community. Where <laughs> on Edge and MOOC, it's okay to be a lurker. And they're, but it's harder to be a lurker because there's less structure. I think if I look at the conversations that happened at Moby Mook, um, it was easier to be a lurker in that community because there were a lot more conversations happening. Um, so there were more active people, which meant that you could actually get more out of lurking. If that makes Rebecca, sense. weren't you the one last week that was expressing frustration? There was not more structure in this Mook. Oh yes, I, I personally think that, um, yeah, the MOOC, the, the facilitators of the MOOC are not facilitating the MOOC, or the hosts of the MOOC are not facilitating, and I think that there's a little bit of structure that I think would have made this a more valuable learning experience okay. for a lot of people. So uh, even within MOOC, there's a continuum of structure is what you're saying. I yeah, want to definitely. Say something. Wow. I want to say something because I have to go and um, I wanted to put this thought out there. <laughs> so it's about, um, I, I'm not showing on the screen, I don't know why, but anyway, um, I, um, I, I, I think the one-on-one -on -one learning, okay, my, my big uh, video pictures are random, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, they just flash through. Uh, so there, I think the, the, there is a Bloom's uh, uh, two delta uh, two delta problem where uh, two, two, two sigma problem I'm sorry uh, where uh, one on one learning was shown to be two standard deviations more effective than group learning in classrooms it's called Bloom's two sigma problem however I think it's not about one on one as much as different variables I think we have correlation here rather than uh, cause and effect. Um, I think it's more about uh, personal support, which doesn't have to be one-on-one, -on -one, it just has to be personalized. See, a group supporting one person is even more powerful than one person supporting one person. Uh, so, uh, and another variable is personal meaning, significance, and relevance. And again, personal meaning, significance, and relevance does not have to happen in one-on-one -on -one environments. It's more likely to happen there compared to a class. However, in a MOOC, you can have a very high meaning and significance without ever being one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, anyway, that's something I wanted to say here uh, about one-on-one uh, -on -one versus groups. It's not a, it's not about quantities. It's about individualization. It's fun hanging out with you math people. I like the statistical approach to uh, making sense of this. Um, and to answer a couple of hangout questions, uh, Maria, the reason you don't see your video is because you never get your video big unless you click on yourself. If you click on yourself in the little small videos, then you become prominent. And you can click on anyone and it will feature their video. If you click on it again, then supposedly it's the person who's speaking unless there's someone typing or making a bunch of noise and then their video will pop up. But we're losing you, Maria? I got to run. Goodbye. See Bye. You later. Great to meet you. Bye. And Allison, your thought about learner's motivation? Um, yeah, I, I, um, I completely agree with Maria. Um, that it's, I've certainly done one-on-one -on -one sessions with uh, um, young people who uh, 
where they're not really motivated, they're not really there for themselves. They're there because their parents want them to be there. Um, they're so, uh, you know, and they're not really getting anything out of it, where I've totally seen, you know, someone, and I've certainly experienced it in a very large group, and, you know, getting tons out of it, because it's your motivation, it's sort of personalized to what the person's about. So, um, I, I would completely agree with Maria. Um, and to answer Joel's question, I am in Korea. Oh, so a long way off. <laughs> I got <laughs> confused the last time. <laughs> Uh, sorry, Jeff. <laughs> okay. Do you know anybody in Europe who's involved in the in in MOOCs? You, you can't. Uh, you, you can't wait to figure out this uh, European project for a MOOC, huh? <laughs> no, I think no, because I think it's ideal. I really think it's ideal and fits very, as far as I can see, would fit very nicely within the context of the sort of priorities and the uh, the boundaries of of our projects. And I'm sorry to be an audio nag again. I just want to, again, encourage people to chat in the chat room. And I'll put the link in our Hangout chat. And the reason is because every time we chat in the Hangout, we get a little ding, ding, ding. And so in the audio, we get all these little dings, which as an audio. Am, am I chatting in the wrong place? Because I'm not sure if there's someplace else I should. I, I just put this link is. into the Hangout chat. Uh, if you click there, you'll be you'll see the stream, and then below that a chat room. This is the correct Hangout chat, but because all of those little dings, I get OCD about the audio. Uh, in any event, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Chahira. Um, I was going to say just quickly to Joel's question. Um, Inga, aka Ignatia, is in Belgium. And she's the one that set up uh, Moby Mook. Okay, can you actually write her name in, please? Uh, wherever I'm meant to be writing, because I can only see. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Joel, the other suggestion I would have for you is that just join the the Google group that goes with this Edu Mook, and post your question there, and I'm sure you'll get several hits. Uh, as I okay. recall, we've had people here from France. I forget that guy's name, but. Um, but there, there are quite a few um, European participants in this, as I recall. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, yeah. Um, the, the, Rebecca, the you should be able to get into the chat without logging in or anything. It it started and then it has now told me that I need to log in. So it was there and now it's gone. <laughs> hmm. Just put in your name and then hit enter. It, and then it'll, it put your name in there. Okay. I know Chihira got in. And I don't think we're hearing your audio yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got her writing, we've got her face. That's a start. <laughs> um, I, one thing you might check, Chihira, is your Hangout settings. You might select a different mic. Welcome to the other chat room, Rebecca. I'm I'm having I'm actually having trouble finding the the chat for this hangout. But uh, Jeff, I, I can see the chat obviously in the hangout. Okay. Did you if you look at that chat? Do you see my last entry in that chat? It's a URL edumook 2011. Whatever. Yeah. Did you click yeah. on that? Use that one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now I got it. Okay. I think this is working now. I think you're right. Oh, great voice. <laughs> Welcome. Hi everyone. Thank you Welcome. very much. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, who you are, where you are, what brings you to this yeah. Edge Mook cast? Of course. Um, well, actually, I was I was um, two weeks ago. I saw uh, on Twitter someone tweeting about, "Hey, we're hanging out," and um, that was huge. Jeff was said, yeah, please come hang out with us. And I was curious, and I could not set up all these Google things um, at that time. So I'm Shahila Nwira. I am based in Germany in Bonn. I work for the United Nations University. And um, yeah, we based here in, um, in Bonn. We are the vice rector in Europe. And um, with um, some of my colleagues, uh, we are in charge of 
of um, e-learning projects and uh, also involved in open education. Um, we do have um, collaborations with um, universities in Africa um, and uh, yeah currently I'm working on an open education open educational resources project where we try to with uh, seven other partners um, look at how can we recognize learning or training um, acquired through open educational resources and I'm of course mm. personally very much interested in the MOOC uh, movement if I can call it so it's good to see you in person rather than just on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see you in person too. <laughs> United Nations yeah, um, University. That sounds like a good idea. Uh, why haven't I heard more about those? That's good to hear. Actually, we, we our headquarters are in Japan, in Tokyo. And uh, we've been um, on uh, since a long time, 1973. And so we had different institutes around the world, uh, mainly in Europe, but also in Africa. And this um, is f affiliated with the United Nations. It's not just borrowing the name. No, it, it's really the academic arm, and <laughs> you know, uh, for the United Nations, um, trying to to bring the um, academia scientists together. Um, with priorities and reflections on all the thematics of the United Nations, but not exclusively. And um, although we don't have students in our building here, uh, not yet. We were not able to grant degrees until last year, uh, but now we can do that. And um, yeah, we'll be starting soon a program. And we have a research institute. Um, it's focused on environmental and human security and um, with um, the university based in Bonn um, will be creating a program and um, be able to grant degrees. They run a pretty open content show over there at the UN, don't they? They're very into open source and open content, so I hear. Well, um, I joined the team here two years ago, so I'm still discovering um, but yes, we would like to have um, as much as possible open content available. Um, we, we, I think we part of, we've been part of the open courseware um, since few years, um, and um, yeah, now currently working on a proposal on um, how to make all you know coordinate uh, the resources that we have, um, make them available. Um, so that's a project that I hope will go through very soon. Excuse me, uh, Chahira. Yes, please. Is, is that, yes. Is that actually a European Union project that you're applying for? You said about uh, open open resources. Well, it's um, we in the project. We started it last year. It's uh, funded by the European uh, Union. Yes. Um, it's um, on okay. the Erasmus Virtual Campus scheme. Right. Um, okay. Because somebody in Norway actually came to me with another uh, call for something to do with open educational resources across yeah. Europe. A very big, uh, a very big uh, proposal. Okay, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, but we missed the deadline. That we were too late. So, I'm just interesting how yours. Uh, goes into the, that as well well we as I said we started um, we get we got in uh, last year and the project goes on for uh, two years so end yeah. of September 2012 um, so we are in the middle of um, this project and of course it depends on the scheme and whatever you apply for um, of course. Uh, deadlines are different so yeah That's fine. thank you Okay. So we have a number of, I think, open threads. Feel free to jump in anywhere. Uh, Rebecca, we haven't really heard what's on your mind this week. Yeah, it's been a crazy week. So <laughs> what's on my mind this week? Um, I just posted on the, the po personal learning networks, but my focus is actually... Um, 
I'm jumping back towards focusing on mobile learning and so looking at where that's going to go um, from a thesis perspective. So that's like way not related to this MOOC. But um, the personal learning learning plans and, and I, I think actually the question I would throw out to everybody there is sort of what do you do to cultivate your learning network? What is mo more than just following a couple of blogs, but is there something else you do? I'm sorry, say that again? What's the question? I'm being pretty incoherent today, I think, is really what's happening, I realize. No, that's okay. I'm, I'm, um, it's late and I'm, I'm a little wearier than usual. I <laughs> know, I'm just curious from everyone, sort of, what do you guys do to cultivate your, um, your personal learning networks? I so, stream Hangouts. Yeah, we, yeah, I think this is pretty cool. <laughs> I concur. Yeah, well, um, I th I think I, I spend uh, some time uh, actually following what's going on on Twitter. Um, now that I have um, a lot more people to follow, which drives me crazy sometimes because <laughs> it takes a lot more time than I would like to spend. And um, yeah, sometimes um, people just um, tweet about a lot of um, interesting ideas like um, this colleague of mine also working for the United Nations University um, last week, um, no it was last month actually, uh, tweeting about um, this quad blogging idea. I don't know if you heard about this. No. So yeah, it's um, you were mentioning blogs, Rebecca, and um, it, it seems like some of um, some schools somewhere in the United States tried out this quad blogging um, and, and the idea is pretty simple, is that um, four schools decide to um, have each one a blog and um, say the first week one a school blogs but the others commit to come and leave comments and create the discussion and do that like for the whole month um, rotating uh, the one who blog the first week will be commenting on the other blogs and etc. And, and we thought that that's a pretty cool idea if you would like to um, to to do the same in our institutes um, among you and you or invite others um, to, to, to see how we can use some some of the synergies are already there because we realized oh we're blogging pretty much about the same things and so to create a kind of um, a movement and um, I, I, I thought the idea is cool and it's also um, yeah it opens opens up to to other people who might be that part of your network so yeah again this was associating uh, Twitter and a cool idea of um, getting more readers on the blog but also talking to people and um, maybe in the future invite them to hang out <laughs> Someone connected to that, and what kind of had my attention this week was George Siemens' post about uh, social media losing his interest and saying there's no there there, uh, and kind of just expressing a, you know, Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus are all about this flow and self-promotion, and it's creating very few artifacts that provide more substantive, yeah, that it lacks depth. Uh, what was your, to those who kind of checked that out, any thoughts? Isn't that a tip, typical ac uh, uh, academic response to things like that? You know, when you can't define something, it seems like academics say, well, there's not really any substance there. So that's kind of how I took it. <laughs> Which is funny because being an academic, I'm going to say no. there isn't a lot of substance there. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, um... No, what I what I saw in that is is, is something that I, c I concur with in a lot of ways is that it it's difficult to formulate that depth of discussion and I think that comes to the same idea of a MOOC with not enough structure. The conversations can't get deep if you don't get people starting from the same base. So if you only provide 
a high level of information, then people are going to explore at that high level. You need, you know, if you give them a little bit more of a shared common understanding, then they can explore at a deep, deeper level. And I think a lot of the social network stuff is really, a lot of it is very high level stuff, but it doesn't let you get deep. Um, and then if, as you get deeper and deeper into something, your networks get smaller and smaller. And I think that's just the nature of the way people that, are interested in things. That's a powerful statement there, Rebecca, what you just said. The deeper you get, the smaller your networks get. I think that's a great, you should write about that one. So, if it's a more general network, a bigger network, and lacking depth, does that lack value? No, that's. I guess that would be my point as well, is, is I think for a long time in education, we believe that our job as educators at whatever level is to get people to a certain level so then, then we can have those deeper conversations. But, you know, who's to say that the Twitter stream that somebody suddenly starts following is not deep enough for them at that moment in time. And, you know, it kind of gets back to how much people need to know about the MOOC, you know, how much structure should be there, guidance and that sort of thing. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't think I agree with the depth thing. I think people take the parts that are important to them. And that's as deep as they can go at that moment in time until they deepen their learning. And I think also um, maybe these tools are not are not there um, to get into in in depth uh, with subjects or discussions. Maybe they're they're definitely there to share ideas, um, to point to resources. But maybe we need to have something else, another space to sit together and, and get down and um, to um, more particular things and to deeper discussions, if you will. Um, but I also agree with you saying, um, well, at some point I found this is um, more relevant to me and um, deep enough, so I take it and, um, and I move on. But um, uh, I, I think that, yeah, um, that the, the way we use social media sometimes, um, or, or we I, th I think we sometimes um, overestimate what they can um, offer us, all these tools. Um, it, it's good from time to time just to remember, oh, this is just a tool and maybe I cannot um, just use it all the time for everything. Well, this is what I think. And I, I see part of the role of social media is to help us filter and process. You know, there there is so much out there now that being able to find what we're looking for is a, a challenge and things like Twitter Facebook not as much Google Plus I think uh, help us follow the people who help us find the good stuff and you know and they're all they're always the people who share lots of stuff and sometimes I unfollow someone because they're sharing stuff that I'm not that interested in. Other times, wow, that person is keeping me up to date on the stuff that I am interested in. Uh, and then, you know, we have things like Hangouts and Twitter chats and Facebook discussions. And I think Google Plus does a better job of the processing function of, you know, processing this information that we're, we're coming across. I think the archiving point is valid. I think. Twitter has really very minimal archiving functionality. Facebook too. I mean, have you do you ever look at a Facebook thread that's more than a month old? Um, and Google Plus probably has some of the same challenges, but I feel like at least the fact that you can link to a Google Plus post uh, has more potential for archiving functionality. So, are you saying then that? The more you can link, the deeper the conversation can become? The more you can find the deep conversation that you're interested in. Okay. So that goes back to the whole theory of uh, connections, huh? Or connectivism. So then that's kind of almost a contradiction of Siemens stuff, because that's what he brought up originally. <laughs> yeah. I think George was bored at that time he wrote the, the post. <laughs> 
we could we I, could ask them about that uh, at the panel on Thursday. <laughs> George, it, if you're watching it, this, this was a joke. Sorry, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It, it's interesting um, your comment about Google Plus because I'm finding it generally to be pretty useless for me um, because of it's actually just the way in which it automatically expands all of the discussions that I can only get through one or two and I can't find the interesting ones. There's so a Chrome extension that solves that builder. problem. Uh, uh. <laughs> Super G Plus and so you get everything uh, contracted. Uh, not uh, expanded. Because that would be handy. So, yeah, so you're actually looking at it like you would a Twitter feed, and then you yes. expand the things you, that you're you, interested in. You don't in. even have to click. You just mouse over, and it expands it. I will put that link in the chat room. Yeah, that'd be handy. Dang. Yeah, that, that's a good one, Jeff. So just to throw this out in the, as part of this conversation, so then I wonder about, you know, game-based game, game -based learning and, you know, how much people would argue, or if there is any depth in that as well, um, or or the type of game where there could be deep conversations versus just playing a game. Um, I actually work in that area a little bit. Uh, I, I work with a guy called Professor Thomas Connolly, who's the co-chair of the European Conference on Game-Based Learning. So he would say quite a lot about that. Uh, he's not here though. Um, I, I actually, the way I look at games and education, if I want to take, then let's talk about that uh, as you brought it up, is that it, it's a tool of motivation and of reinforcement. And I think that's how we look at it. It's not core to the actual, and I'm not a pedagogy guy, so please correct me. Um, it's not core to the actual learning unit. What, we, what you can use the game for is to add you know, the engagement of the children, the motivation, and of course, to reinforce whatever you are trying to learn. And there's problems in gaming at the moment because of the cost basis and the making the game. In fact, we, we actually have a European project proposal out there whereby teachers in language education could actually make their own games in about five or ten minutes just to reinforce a particular aspect of the forthcoming lesson. So she would do her lesson normally and then bring that game in at the end or halfway through just to act as a reinforcement and something that they, in a sense, can even take home with them or even divide the class up into different groups and give different games to each one. So that's, that's how I see that. And I did want to say welcome back, Alison. <laughs> um, hi, yeah. I'm really just figuring out how to make this all work. So thanks for just continue talking and I'm just I gotta get into the chat. I gotta like get a whole login thing. So yeah. Oh you shouldn't have just to trying to get, it get any kind of ID time. or anything. You should be able to just mm. what was the solution, Rebecca, it's, when you I were getting I went to say something and it said you need to be logged in. So, it just needs right, a nickname. So, so you just, just have again. to tell it, it say something. Yeah, just give okay. it give it your first name so it knows who to associate yeah. right. your message with. That's all it I do. All right. Well, I'll just try it again. <laughs> okay. And we do have people actually watching. I don't know if it's the six of us or six other people, but uh, uh, if anyone who's watching would like to join in and having any issues finding the Hangout, let us know in a chat room. And you have something that monitors that, Jeff. Tells us the people are watching. Is that right? Uh, I believe every not everyone can see that. We on can the all see that. Oh, if I'm the um, where do you where do you look to see that? Oh, actually, I wonder if I only see it if okay. I play it. Like I'm playing the live stream on my other computer. Yeah, that's what I wondered. Yeah. And so next to live, it shows me six viewers. Okay. Oh, you see four. Oh, I see four. <laughs> oh, well, we lo we're you? losing people. And we're coming up to an hour, so it's probably not a, a bad idea to think about uh, heading toward the home stretch. Um, anything else people want to bring up or follow up on? Thanks for doing this, Jeff. It's always fun. 
Thank you. Yeah, we got. Thanks. We've got Can two we do more a quick scheduled. summary of where everybody is? Sure. Why don't we start on <laughs> the left with Allison? Um, so, what do you mean, where, where I am? <laughs> physically, you mean? Like, Rebecca? physically, literally. Okay, <laughs> where literally. in the world are you? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm in uh, New Jersey, USA, uh, central New Jersey. And I'm in Bonn, Germany. And I am on the 41st floor of a really sweaty apartment here in Pusan, Korea. And I'm in air conditioning in a small town outside of Tel Aviv in Israel. And that's and not my dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in, um, yeah, I am actually have the air conditioning turned off today for a change, but I'm in Ottawa, Canada. And I'm in Central California. Air conditioning on. <laughs> Air conditioning on here on the 28th floor. <laughs> <laughs> and surprisingly, air conditioning off in New Jersey. Hmm. <laughs> so uh, we'll plan on doing this again next week, same time. Um, if and I'm always really bad about posting it kind of last minute or whatever but if people ever want to kind of bring up t and I'll try to post it a couple days beforehand in the Google group and on the Facebook uh, if people kind of want to toss out topics ahead of time feel free otherwise we'll just keep making it up as we go thanks Jeff thanks everyone yeah, thanks. and see you next week thanks okay. everybody yeah, but, um, great to hang out right. okay. thanks bye. 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 bye now nice to meet you all bye Bye.